Welcome back to another uh, live recording of the Tile Money Podcast. Hello, Tile friends. Good to see you again. Thanks for joining me. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about how to stay busy, how to get busy and stay busy, if you're not busy, that is. So a lot of you are busy, and I understand that. But I, I started thinking about and talking to some of you who are actually uh, uh, not really having a lot of work right now. And so I wanted to talk to you about that. Um, but before we get started in that subject, I do have some other some other stuff to talk about. So I've got some tile industry news that I wanted to share with you. And as always, uh, those of you who are watching on, on YouTube or inside Facebook, uh, feel free to make a comment and, uh, and I'll be able to see it over here on my end and we can have a conversation. It's good to see you, uh, Facebook user. Thanks for commenting. Um, at the top of this post, uh, there's instructions to go to streamyard.com uh, slash Facebook or something like that. And then I could actually see your name like Christopher. Actually, Chris is calling in from uh, from uh, YouTube. So, But if you want, you can register with uh, this program I'm, I'm using called StreamYard. And the link is at the top there. And so, uh, so listen, let's get to it here. I've got some tile news, some tile news I wanted to share with you. I also have some motivational quotes that are happening in the Facebook group. I wanted to share with those of you to kind of motivate you. And I know it's Tuesday, you know, uh, we're kind of getting the, getting the week started. And sometimes we need that motivation. So, uh, and, and then of course, like I said here, like I mentioned, I did want to talk to those of you specifically who are, are kind of struggling to stay busy, get busy and not having work right now. Uh, because a couple of weeks ago, I recorded a live episode like this one uh, called, you know, what to do when you have too much work. And I discussed some of the problems, some of the different strategies uh, that some of you could utilize if your phone's ringing just off the hook, off the hook. Uh, thanks for calling in from Florida. Good to see you. That's where I'm at. I'm over here in, uh, in Bradenton, Florida. So enjoying I'm enjoying Bradenton, and I'm going to be doing. Um, well, I'll I'll save that for the tile news here, <laughs> but but yeah. So so some of you are reporting, you know, you're not busy. So I wanted to talk to you and see if I can give you some encouragement and try to work through it. And listen, my phone's open. I'm I'm easy to get a hold of. You know, uh, text message, messenger, Instagram, however you want to get a hold of me, get a hold of me, and we can schedule a phone call and talk about this if you're struggling with a certain aspect of your business. I want to start you know, reaching out to you and, and letting you know that I've been able to have some great conversations uh, with some of you. Um, so let's let's handle this tile news before we get into that, the meat of that subject. And um, I wanted to let you know this first news is from Later Creek. And Ron Nash is up to something as usual. And I want to show you here. Um, you can, you can join Ron Nash. He's going to be going live, sometimes inside Tile Money Facebook group, sometimes inside the Ladecre Inside Track Facebook group. And you can join him on his journey. And let me show you what I'm talking about here. He's actually traveling around for a couple of weeks. And he started in, in uh, Utah. And he's going down, down south, down all the way to L.A., and then back up north all the way up to Seattle and then back over. So this is a couple week trip that he's going to be taking here. And, and uh, he's just calling it the customer appreciation trip. And he's going around the country talking to some of his friends that he's known for years, interviewing some of his friends. Uh, they're talking about the business. Uh, they're talking about uh, some of these people are, are staying busy uh, right now during, you know, COVID, during these uh, unprecedented times. And he wants to kind of highlight, you know, different strategies they're using, how they're communicating with their clients, how they're staying busy. Um, and he also wants, to, he's going to highlight some really neat projects along the way. He told me about them. I'm not going to give away everything, but listen, if you're not inside uh, Ladecree Inside Facebook group, Inside Track, you'll probably want to check that out to join him along his journey. Uh, I think they're going to be putting some videos up on YouTube. Uh, there's already one up there kind of explaining it. You can go to Lady Creek on the, the YouTube jan channel and join that because uh, Ron's up to fun, some fun stuff there. And uh, I know you'll, you'll enjoy that. Uh, he's always uh, doing something, doing something fun and innovative. And that's one of the things I like about uh, Lady Creek is they're not afraid to uh, get in 
and do something different. And then the next tile news is sponsored by the NTCA and they've got this new text message option. Uh, and you know, I think it's brilliant actually. I, I think it's a really good idea. I signed up right away. And so what, what they'll do is they'll text you, uh, for regional events, events, you know, they're, they're really because of COVID they've had to cancel pretty much all these events right now but they're holding them virtually. So when things go back to normal though, you, you won't miss an event that was like an hour away or two hours away or whatever, because they're going to text you and say, Hey, this event is coming up. And I think it's nice. They're, they're not going to like bombard your phone. They said no more than six messages per month maximum. They probably won't even, you know, get up to that a lot of times, but, uh, you can opt in by simply texting NTCA to three, one, nine, nine, six. And I did that and it works great. It works seamlessly. And then they're able to let you know. And the purpose of this is really just to remind people when these programs are happening. I asked Mark, I said, is this for NTCA members only? He said, no, anybody, any tile contractor who's interested in learning more, uh, that's, that's what they're doing. They're putting out this information to help tile contractors. So this is going to work for uh, both, like I said, the in-person events when they come back, but right now the virtual events. So I'm actually going to be attending one of those virtual events tomorrow night, Wednesday, the, the six is it. Uh, the fifth or the sixth, I think tomorrow's the fifth. Um, it's a zoom round table discussion starting tomorrow evening. So let me know if you need the link for that, but, um, let's see here. If you head over to their NTCA page and the technical round table, uh, you can find all those links, but again, you know, sign up for the text message thing. I think that's a brilliant idea. Um, and, and join me tomorrow for that discussion. That should be, that should be interesting. You know, now I want to take a minute here and uh, and thank one of my Patreons before we get to the subject. And I want to thank uh, Chase Twitchell. And Chase is a, a great guy. And he's got this great, he's not only an entrepreneur, a, a tile contractor, uh, but he's also an inventor. And he's got this great... Uh, this great drain, this bonding flange drain. If you haven't seen this thing, look at how beautiful this is. If you're, if you're listening on the podcast, you can check it out on, on YouTube, but, uh, it's just a beautifully designed bonding flange drain, you know, made by a tile contractor for tile contractors. He's calling it the, the world's most advanced bond flange kit coming June, coming soon. So if you enter, if you actually go over here to flowfx.com, you can just pay like 20 bucks. He's asking, and you get the drain choice of your great and a hat or t-shirt for just 20 bucks. So, uh, that's a good deal. I, I signed up for that and I'm looking forward to getting that in the mail. Um, so definitely, you know, check out Chase's new product flow FX and Chase again, thank you for supporting me. Thank you for becoming a Patreon of mine. And I put the link in the notes to this uh, live episode, if you if you're benefiting from this work I'm doing, you know, and if you're in a position to financially, certainly if you're hurting, don't worry about it. Uh, but if you're if you're benefiting financially and you want to support me monetarily, you can now do that with the Patreon link that's in the description of this episode. Um, and I'll be giving shout outs to all my Patreons over the Patrons over the weeks uh, within the episodes, and then I'm also going to be creating some patron only content for you because you are uh kind of you know supporting me financially so we're going to have some some more uh condensed content um so so that'll be good uh let's get to these motivational shout outs I, I wanted to share with you some of the stuff that's happening inside the facebook group This was pretty, this is pretty cool to see stuff like this. Odie Welsh, uh, he said that, uh, he got 4350 for a backsplash 75 square feet. So I think that's like 60 bucks a foot or something like that. He never thought to himself, he could, he could charge so much for, for a backsplash. So, you know, look, and he described the job, it, you know, it was a little bit, uh, complicated job and stuff like that, but that's, that's the kind of stuff that we're seeing in the Facebook group and we're having discussions about it. So, um, let's see, there's another one and these just get me excited. This is a, this is the kind of stuff I live for is to see this kind of excitement and this kind of success really, and really it's happening, uh, pretty much every week inside the Facebook group or on Instagram, somebody tells me about the success. David Sandana says, uh, 
He recently delivered an estimate to a customer who was by their admission shocked that it was nearly twice as much as the next highest bid. Needless to say, David says he handled the objection by the following. He told them, look, I, you know, I know what you're looking for. I know what you want. Um, but you, you told me the job needs to be excellent. So my estimate has factored in all the complications, the tile, the fact that you want this thing perfect. Um, I'm, I'm kind of quoting him loosely here, but he, he told them and he explained to them uh, that he understood, you know, the importance of this job to them. And so the con or the client actually wrote back and said, uh, thank you for, for, you know, kind of reassuring me there. And I understand that, you know, you need to make a profit. And so they actually, you know, booked the job. And so uh, David's congratulations on that, man. You know, it's, it's really hard when, when you're getting um, underbid by like sometimes half. I mean, I've been underbid by half before and that, that hurts. I mean, that feels really rough because um, I mean, what do you do when you're underbid by half? Uh, a lot of times we just give up, but I'm going to be actually writing a blog post on this very subject on how we can follow up because I've been noticing a trend in the Facebook groups and the trend is, is kind of, is kind of dangerous is just to give up or just to say, ah, you know, uh, s s you know, reply really like short. Oh, thanks. You know, thanks for your consideration and things like that. But what I'm actually seeing is some of you are taking a, a step further, sometimes via a phone call or just kind of a follow-up questionnaire. And instead of wasting all that time, all that time you spent estimating all that time, you already invested in your client. You're actually doing follow-ups like David did here and just like a little bit more. I mean, it wasn't much. It was just a paragraph more and then he landed the job. So that's that's my motivation for you today is, look, this good these good things are happening out there. It can happen to you too. Don't be afraid to, uh, to chase it, to go after it a little bit and, and really put yourself out there and, and put to practice some of the things you're learning in this group, on this podcast, in other books, in other podcasts. Uh, put it into put it into practice and see what happens because really it's, it's sometimes it's just that little bit extra effort that makes the world of difference and can really change everything and and we're seeing this I'm I'm writing a blog post for tech so look forward to that coming out here in a couple of weeks but I'm writing a blog post on this very subject on how just a little bit more you've already put you know all this effort four or five hours into the bid and just a little bit more effort another 20 30 minutes can sometimes completely change the deal and and why waste it you know why waste it you've already invested that that really time and money um so so let's talk about what to do if you're not busy and i'd love to hear from some of you in the comments if you're not busy uh or, or what you've found to stay busy i'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the things i've done in the past um and some of the things i would suggest you do you know now it can be kind of tricky because we at first we really need to identify why you're not busy um is it because so spend some time identifying this really do some critical thinking some some honest thinking and identify the problem is it because your phone is not ringing and that's why you're not busy and see that's a completely different problem than no, your phone is ringing. You're just not landing the job. I mean, there's two different problems. So first, I would say that, you know, by all means, take the time to identify what the exact problem is. Excuse me for a minute. And so maybe you want to pull somebody in on, on this discussion. Maybe you want to talk to your business partner, your wife, another tile setter, and, and really identify what the issue is. Because uh, like, you know, J what is it? July 2020 here, uh, everybody should, you know, be able to be uh, getting work. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we've had these hiccups here with this COVID situation and everything, but a lot of you are reporting that you're busy. So if you're not busy, identify the problem. What's going on? Is it my marketing? And if it's your marketing, I want to encourage you uh, to, you know, do something, do something every single day. If you're not installing tile, you have to remember you're a business owner. And so you have to get busy every single day. And I'll tell you a story that I shared at the beginning of this podcast, 105 episodes, you know, episode one, I kind of shared this story of when I moved to Cayucas, California, 
Uh, Cayucas is a town of like 2,000 people, so not a lot of people, but it's right on the water. It's cliffside, so there's no there's no real land, so you can only build up the cliffs so high, and they really had a lot of building restrictions. But the towns and stuff uh, within the surrounding areas, you know, it probably made up around 100,000 people. There's like one Costco, one Home Depot, t- stuff like that. So there's within a 45 mile range, there was enough um, enough people, right? Enough opportunity. But I was a brand new kid on the block. I was brand new in that city. I had, you know, like I said, we just moved. Um, and and uh, what what? So what did I do? What did I do? I got busy there. We had, we, you know, we we lived two blocks from the ocean. It was the highest amount of rent I had ever paid up until that point in my life. And we had like I, I think like maybe six, maybe maybe two to three months of, of savings. Um, and after that, I mean, that gets sketchy. So I had to get busy. Uh, I didn't know a soul down there. We didn't have family. We didn't have uh, very few friends. We were just kind of meeting them as we went. You know how it goes. So uh, what did I do? I, I went to uh, one of those stores, one of those um, you know print print shops, and I printed like 500 business cards for $9.99 or whatever. Not a lot of money, not a lot of investment. And I hit the street, I hit the ground running. I went and I did guerrilla marketing. I went to all the construction sites I could find. And to be honest, the first job I took was um, a roofing job. I was just, you know, I went up to this contractor, I said, I'm, I'm a tile contractor. He says, well, I don't need tile, we're, we're months out here. He said, but if, you, if you're looking for work, I could put you to, you know, put you to work on the, um, on the trusses. We were fr- doing some framing. And I said, yeah, well, you know, I, I mean, I've, Let's do it. And so we went to work. It was like a two week job and we did, we did the trusses, we did the framing and we knocked that out and that was a lot of fun. And I made a connection. I made a really great connection because this guy had a lot of connections. He knew he was a local. He, he knew all the builders. He, you know, he, he grew up there, you know? And so that's exactly what I had to do at that time. And, and little by little, he helped me get my name out there, started telling me about different people. I might contact started, you know, phoning people saying, Hey, I got this great guy, Luke Miller. He had known me by then he's a tile contractor that's his specialty and he's a hard worker um you know he's not afraid to put roll his sleeves up and get to work the very next guy i met um after that job was done i again i hit the streets and and started looking for contractors i I went up to this contractor who was building this um kind of like a small hotel or something like that it turns out it was like an old folks home like a retirement home right and I said, hey, you know, uh, it was commercial work. And I said, I'm a tile contractor, new in the area, licensed. Started talking to the, to the builder on, this, on the site. He said, we don't have any tile work, but uh, I, guess, I guess I could suggest that we do some tile work to the owner. And I said, that'd be great. And he had these two bathrooms in the lobby. He said, well, we were going to put, you know, vinyl up on the wainscoting all around, you know, four feet high, all the way around these two bathrooms. And I said, oh, that'd be great. And he said, what, what would you charge? And I gave him a price right off, you know, it's just six by six um, tile. He was just going to do Dell tile. And I gave him a price right then and there. And he said, yeah, let me see. And he called me up the next day. He said, the owners loved it. It's a, it's a fine price, Luke. Let's put you to work. Um, and so I went out and knocked out those two bathrooms. Do you know for years later, for years, that, that GC, who was a very uh, established, uh, actually, builder and um uh, commercial builder and his son was doing some residential building as well. He used me. I, I worked, I ended up working in his personal home, um, over the years and remodeled his, his personal shower and, and floor and, um, all that stuff. So we had a great relationship, but that's exactly what you got to do. You got to go out there, hit those streets, uh, do that guerrilla marketing, shake those hands, um, you know, and really belly to belly marketing. That's, what's going to put you on the map. All right. We've got a few comments here. Dave Carp from uh, Minneapolis says, I call on my local Alliance of Tile Brothers and lend them a hand. Great idea, Dave. And this is it too. Like um, that's the power of friendships. I've talked about this before. Don't view everybody as your competitor. Try to make friends. Some of these guys, half these guys, you know, might not want to talk to you, but half of them will, and they'll actually be your friend and be really relieved that you made the first step. And then you can, when you're, when you're slow, you can say, do you need, do you have any extra work? Half the time they'll say, yeah. And I've done this too. This is a great example. I, I've done this with Adam Kofer. Uh, you know, sometimes I would work on his jobs and sometimes he would come work on mine, depending on who had the work, just because we were friends, we were staying in touch. And, and so that's a great idea, Dave. That's another great point. Um, 
you know, go to the tile shops at 7 a.m. in the morning as soon as they open and hang around. Bring the guys some donuts if you can afford it. The the actual people. I I mean, there's you know, part of being a business owner, you got to do it. You got to kiss a little, kiss a little behind. You know, bring them the donuts. They're gonna love you for it. And hang around and talk to the tile contractors as they come in and just get to know them. Just give them a big smile and tell them who you are and what you can do. Um, let's see. Dave says. Estimates are being labeled as too high, much more expensive than the other builder. You know, I'm noticing this is a trend here recently, uh, the last couple months here. Uh, and I think, I think, and you can uh, let me know if you agree with me, but I think what's going on, friends, is these people are coming out of the woodwork. This always happens during a recession. They lose their job. Uh, at, you know, whatever, because of COVID, right? And, and the coming recession and they lose their job and they say, oh, I remember I was a helper and I know how to grow. I know, you know, I, oh, I think I'm going to go back into the tile business. And really they have no business being in the tile business, but they come back in and they're doing it for peanuts. They're doing tub surrounds for a couple hundred bucks, three, 400 bucks. They're just trying to survive. They're not going to pay taxes on their money. They're not going to run a business. They're not going to establish a business half the time or more. And they're undercutting us. So this is really um, an important topic that I think, you know, as a community, we need to talk about more. Like Dave says, recently it's, it's being, it's a problem. You know, people are saying you're higher, you're, you're higher. And, you know, last year at this time, even six months ago at this time, you, you were more like equal with everybody. Right, Dave? And so I would say to that, uh, we need to get really good at establishing the difference and establishing um, that we are the ones who can deliver what the client wants. See, uh, they want something. So if they want it bad enough, they can afford it. And, and, but we just have to convince them as soon as possible on the first conversation that we're the ones that can deliver that. And it's not so much about talking about our qualifications, talking about this and that, because most of the time they could care less. It's more about asking them questions, being the professional. If you think about professionals, like if you go to a doctor, if you go to a chiropractor recently, I had, if you, you know, I had my back out, I had, I had to go to the dentist. So I've, you know, if you go to these professional establishments, the first thing they do is start asking you questions. They might have a list of six questions that they need to ask you. That's when you feel comfortable. You start to think, oh, I feel comfortable with this doctor, with this dentist, with this chiropractor, whatever the case might be, not because they're talking about their, where they went to school or anything like that. Even though those things are on the wall, there's an, there, now this is an important distinction. Those things are on the wall. They're visible. They're there. They're assurance. But really the thing that makes you comfortable with them is the way they're listening to you. So ask questions to these people. Get them very comfortable with you. This is the important thing about sales is you have, these people buy from people. People buy from people, so they have to be comfortable with you. So you, and the only way you're going to do that is to ask them a lot of questions about themselves, respond in a way that shows that you are listening. It, it's going to be a struggle, though. I, I, I won't sugarcoat it, Dave, or anybody else who's listening. Like, it, it's, it's a struggle right now, and every time there's a recession, this happens because people come out of the woodwork and start underbidding us. So it is a problem. All I can say is, can look, look at it as an opportunity to. Uh, to improve your your sales and what does that mean what does that really mean does that mean talking about you or does that mean asking them questions and talking about them somebody said they're they're busy for the most part but get slow at times all right this is a good point i'm going to talk about this for a minute so what happens to contractors every contractor does this i've done this a bunch of times every small business owner does this contractors especially is you get busy you get the leads coming in you're really busy and and you're so busy, in fact, for, for weeks or maybe you've scheduled out two months that you let go of your marketing. You let go of your returning phone calls. There was a picture on Instagram from Kevin Ford, Waterline Tile out of Morro Bay this morning that I saw. It was a contractor sitting at a bar having a beer with another contractor. And he said something like, I'm slow. I only got one phone call last week. Maybe I should call them back. <laughs> and that hits the nail on the head. That's what most contractors are doing when you're busy. You're not calling people back even. You wouldn't believe once I got myself out of installing and call back every single call, how people responded. They were like, wow, you called me within a day. You called me within an hour. 
thank you so much for returning my call. I mean, boom, right away. It's the simple thing. Someone said, I think Tilo said the Michael Stone interview was really powerful. If you go back, listen to Michael Stone, it's so powerful because it's the basic things he's talking about. And he's just saying, return your phone calls, guys, return your phone calls. So simple yet so powerful. The people who learn this know this. And, and so when you get busy, make sure, and that's, that's the importance of, uh, like Steve Rosh said way back when, he said, look, you've got to be 20% of your time as a business owner has to be in the office. You've got to be doing the office. You can't just be out there installing every day because the business is going to fall apart. So that's an eight hour day or approximately two hours a day. So whatever you choose, make sure that you're handling your business in the office, in the truck, but phone calls, you know, paperwork, computer work, phone work, whatever it is, whatever you want to call it, not installing tile, see, because otherwise all this other stuff is going to get slow. You're going to get slow if you're busy and you're neglecting all this stuff, you're going to get slow. And that's when the roller coaster comes and you'll never be able to grow. You'll never be able to hire because guys don't want to work for you. If it's a roller coaster and you're busy like hell, and then all of a sudden you got two weeks off, nobody's going to want to work for you. I've been there. I've done that. I've, I've went through that guys employees want to work 40 hours a week typically and they don't want to work um a bunch you know and then have a bunch of dry spells business owners you know sometimes we can do that and if you if that's you just know you're not going to have an, a bunch of employees you're going to you know you might like that lifestyle i don't know it's fine but if you want to scale and grow your business you've got to focus on the business stuff this Facebook user says they visit the high-end tile stores once a month or so with their well-behaved dog and they get, oh, the dog gets more attention than I do for sparkling with and charming personality, but we are remembered. That's awesome. I love it. it that's the ticket right there is you've got to find a way to distinguish yourself from all the other tile contractors. Talk with those girls who are selling, girls or boys who are selling the tile at the tile showroom. Make them remember you. I don't care if that's bringing donuts. I don't care if that's bringing your well-behaved dog who everybody loves. I mean, that's the oldest trick in the book. I remember when I was 14 and I got a puppy. Oh my goodness, I said, the puppy is my way to women's hearts from now on. I'm gonna have a puppy by my side. <laughs> and that's the ticket, guys. You gotta, you gotta work with what you got. If it's a dog, if it's donuts, whatever you got. Uh, Tilo, it's good to see you, man. I'm sorry your internet's not working. All right, Carl's in the house. Carl's got uh, get to know your client just as I want them to know me. It's so true. You got to be comfortable with, with who you do business with. And Carl backs it up with saying he's busy all year long. And, and stuff, guys, listen, this didn't happen by accident. I mean, I, I believe Carl's been in New Jersey for a long, long time and probably in the same community. And he's been working on this, you know, uh, he's been working on his leads. He's been working on, you know, developing this and he's not letting go. He's not, he's not necessarily giving up. And so he stays busy. Mario, good to see you, man. Yeah. I ordered this hat from, from HUDs. You can go online. If you go on his Instagram, you can see where he's got his Shopify account, uh, as do I tile money, Shopify account. This is another important point. So Carl brings out, don't take on projects that you know are wrong for you. Okay, Carl, I agree. But if, if I'm, if we're talking to people who are not busy, who are hungry, you like I said, I was, I was putting trusses up in a home in Morro Bay when I first moved there because I didn't have any tile work and I still needed to pay rent. So I was working on a truss and I'm not a framer, I'm not a carpenter, but look, I've done a little bit of everything just like most people. And somebody was willing to pay me 20 bucks cash to put put trusses up and it was a two week job and he was a, a, a contractor and I, I said, you know what? It's not the right fit, it's not the right job, but I'm gonna do it because of um, the situation. I needed to put food on the table and I know, um, you know, it, and we could go back and forth with this. I, I mean, I, I could argue with myself and, and counterpoint myself here <laughs> uh, because I every time I'm talking, I'm like, well, you know what? Uh, if you just waited, maybe you would've got a sweet tile job. So I, I don't know, it, it's all, it, it's all depends, but um, marketing is where it's at, strong brand. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Carl. You're absolutely right, man. Um, but the point is, if, if you're not busy, you've got, to, you've got to get out there, identify why you're not busy, and then, and then get to work fixing that. So for me, with my example, the reason I wasn't busy, because no one knew me, because I was in a brand new town, so I had to get out there, I had to make contacts, 
And for like a year straight, even like I got busy within two, three weeks, I was setting tile and I never stopped. You know, that, that trust job was just a one-time thing. I never really stopped setting tile, but the reason I, I never stopped was even after work, I would leave work a little early, 3.34, and I, I knew like, look, I've got an hour. These contractors are still on their jobs. I would drive home. I would see a job. I would see a winery being built. I would stop off. I would be all happy. I would, you know, if, if they were in a mood to talk, I would talk to them about whatever they wanted to talk about. And they would say, what's your story? Where are you from? And I would tell them where I was from and everything. And, and then I would give them my business card. I would give them my business card. And I should have had a website uh, at that time. I didn't even have a website, but, um, but I, I, I just, I just stayed busy. And from those seeds that I was planting, I, I stayed busy for years. Um, and, but what happened is I too started dropping off. I started neglecting all that. I started neglecting all that. And then I did experience the, the roller coaster ride. And then I had to get back to the basics, right? Mario says, Lee gets the work for us. So that's another, that's another thing guys is understand wh where your strengths are understand where your strengths are um because listen some of you guys and i encourage i encourage guys if you can sell and you're happy working in, in customers homes and, and you're clean and you can actually talk to them and sell to them i encourage you to start a, like a little remodel business i mean you're remodeling showers you might as well remodel the bathroom i mean that's kind of where i took my business and where it kind of evolved to but no matter what the case is, if that's for if that's good for you and you actually enjoy that, focus on that. Like Carl said, know where you need to be, uh, know where you need to be, because if that's a good spot for you, go after that and only sell to homeowners, only sell to clients, forget the contractors. Now, on the other hand, if you hate being in people's home, you hate the small talk, you hate getting to know their dogs and you hate hanging uh plastic drop cloths and you hate everything about it you hate the fact that their yard is landscaped and manicured and now you're bringing in a mess and you just love new construction just go for it admit that you're you're a new construction guy you want to be with the new construction you want to go after those contractors and like mario said find find a contractor who's willing to know your worth and willing to pay you. Don't accept, I mean, get in with whoever you need to, to get busy, but always be looking for that better contractor. I'll, it's the same thing. It's the same thing with contractors. Always be marketing to the next better contractor, the bigger contractor, the guy who builds the bigger homes, the guy who uh, spends more on his subs and has a better relationship with his subcontractors. Always be looking for that next opportunity. And once you, once you say, hey, I can make 500 bucks more a shower going with this contractor, you're not married to that other, jackass you're not married to any of these guys go and find somebody who will pay you for what you're worth and then and then you raise your prices another 500 bucks that's the way it works and the next contractor you're like my my new this is my price i mean he doesn't know what you know the other guys get paying and you keep working your way up the ladder until you're really pay, making a profit and then you can start uh you can actually start to um build on that and, and that's when you can do something like um like some of these guys like Mark Samoli, you know, they, they're just knocking out these homes. They have a crew, they have 15 guys or whatever. That's really where you get to that point is by really, you know, getting, getting in with these contractors. So, um, yeah, like Mario says, they're working in a, a $4 million home. Um, that's awesome, Mario. I'm, I'm stoked for you. Seven bathrooms, five splashes. I mean, it's, it's very attractive business model to be working in those homes. And I, I actually, you know, I, I wanted to do that at one point. Um, and then I did, I did some of those homes. I mean, we didn't, you know, in California, like a five or $7 million home still only has three bathrooms. <laughs> so there's only like, you know what I mean? But, um, let's see here. Oh, Tilo was saying, yeah. So Tilo's saying, and, and he's in a rough market guys. And I feel for you down there in LA area. Um, he's too expensive. His competitors are charging seven K for yeah, I read that post and yeah, this is a great example. So they're charging like, what is that? Five, five dollars, five or six dollars a foot. Um, I'm doing the math in my head here for demo and prep on tile floors. They're going to demo and prep and install a tile floor for $7,000, 1,350 square feet. The sad thing about this comment Tilo made, the sad thing is, because I read, I was in this thread 
And you've got quite a few guys saying that's just the way it is. Suck it up. Learn to work faster. Yada, yada, yada. You can't hang with us. You're not a pro. It's like, guys, guys, this is 2020. This is July. People are still spending money hand over fist. They just can't spend it fast enough. These consumers are out there spending the money. And we're not talking about 12 by 12 eased edge with the quarter inch grout joints. I mean, that's when you could really make some money on floors. Guys are still charging what guys were charging in 2000 and 98, 1998 for a 12 by 12 tile eased edge, three sixteenths or quarter inch grout joints. I mean, you could blow and go, you could lick them and stick them. That's the way I was raised. We would do like 500 feet in a day. An installer was expected with a helper to get that in. And we would do whole houses in Arizona in two days time with a crew of like four people, like 1500 square feet. That's why those two or three, $4 square foot prices that you sometimes hear about, that's where that came from. But you gotta be fast. You gotta be in and out of there. We're doing plank tile nowadays, guys. The, the prep is getting worse. The concrete's worse than it ever has. We're doing four foot plank tile. You got to raise your prices. You can't be at five and $6 a square foot for this stuff. Especially, I mean, especially including demo and prep. That's crazy. That's ridiculous. Yet these guys will come in there and blow it out with five or six guys who are all making pennies and, and half of them are misclassified employees and, and not paying taxes. And, and you will, you might get away with that for years and years, but that could really burn you. That could really ruin your life. I talked to a guy yesterday. He's an older contractor. He's 57 years old. He's been in the trades his whole life. He's been in tile. He's a Mason. He was saying, he was telling me stories about this where guys, we, we brought up this subject, 1099. He said, you know what? I've talked to guys and they got, they got away with it for a lot of years, but they got burned and it destroyed their business. It, they're in trouble with the IRS. They'll never, you get in trouble with the IRS because you've been tax evading. You'll never, ever get out of that. And, and he was talking about specifically the contractor who had all these employees who were 1099 guys. And he said, look, the IRS and the government basically said, you cannot employ these guys anymore or we're coming after you because now you're informed. Now, you know, it's illegal and they're, they're not necessarily chasing down the guys for him. So it was actually the contractor's responsibility. Now, all of a sudden he had to completely rechange his business, rethink everything he was doing. It's not a smart idea, guys. If you're, and I've done it, I'm guilty of it because, Hey, I was a misclassified employee from 17 on from the year, from the age I was 17. So I thought it was normal. I didn't know it was any different. Um, Carl says the best marketing I ever did was wrapping my van. It was a $3,000 investment, but it's made me hundreds of thousands of dollars. Amen, Carl. I wrapped, I wrapped my trailer. I had a 14 foot trailer. I wrapped that sucker and I didn't wrap my truck, but I had, it was white. So I had a lot of bold, like little, um, stickers on there, not stickers, but vinyl. And people thought I had a fleet of trucks. People would meet me and they said, oh yeah, we've seen your trucks all over town. <laughs> and I had one truck. It's a great investment guys. And listen, some of, the, some of the people I know won't do that because they're actually doing illegal jobs and stuff and they don't want people to come to their jobs. I, I mean, I don't, like I said, it's, you can get away with it and make some fast money, but if, <sighs> It's, I mean, how much risk do you want to put out, put yourself out there? Know what you're profitable at. I'm most profitable on three to five days project. I love, I love that Carl. Um, and for some people, it's going to be the bigger projects that they're more profitable at. They're more comfortable at. You don't have to, you know, constantly be setting up your tools. Uh, but for Carl, it's the complete opposite. Uh, let's see, Dave. Now Dave says, yeah. So here's some more motivation. He said he was on a job. He, uh, he didn't think they were in the right neighborhood to hire him and pay him, but he needed the work. So he actually sold her on professional professionalism, warranty, prompt scheduling. She questioned the numbers and then only gave the master bath. So part of the work. And then after a week on the master bath, she saw the professionalism value. Then she awarded me the three other, the other three bathrooms and two more backsplashes. Congratulations, Dave. That's how you do it, man. That's a, that's called a, a, a layup. You know, that's an easy win. You, you get in there. Um, they got a big house, um, and, and you sell them on your professionalism. I, I love it. Good story, man. Thanks for sharing. I appreciate that. Yeah. Dave said he was about ready to quit in the last like five years ago. Uh, but resurrected it and back to hustling and new contractors. 
It's, it's a continual thing. That's the thing about all this marketing sales. It's a continual process. You can't give up on it. You've got to continue to, to, to twer- tweak it. Uh, eventually you'll find yourself in a situation like Carl, uh, like Mark, even Dave, I'm sure where, y- where your energy output is getting less and less because all of a sudden you, you just got it down. It just becomes part of your nature to sell and to, uh, you don't have to necessarily always think about it, but you've got to always be doing something like that. You've got to always put effort into it. And so let's see, what else was I going to talk about? So we, I think I've convinced you canvas the neighborhoods, do the guerrilla marketing. Um, so if you're in an area and you have past clients, call those past clients, put in the work, pick up the phone call and go through a list, call three a day. And then, you know, while you're doing other things, call three a day. I mean, this is a good, you know, for anybody, excuse me. Even if you are staying busy, this could be really good for you just to like try to call two past clients a day and just say, like, just kind of stay friends with them. You might call them uh, every six to 12 months. They're not going to be annoyed, you know? And if they, if they ask you to stop calling, just, you know, stop calling, take them off your list. This is what a, a CRM customer re, uh, relationship manager is for. And, and with, uh, my partner, we're actually, we've actually built one and we have it available at happy And you can keep track of all your, all your clients, all your past clients. You can put them, their emails, their addresses. You can make notes about them. You can put them in a system to where the system tells you, okay, today you're calling these three to people. Okay, it's the one year anniversary. It's been a year since you emailed them a Christmas card or, or mailed them, you know, either way and do it again. It's, it's the time. So you're not having to think about it. It's out of your brain. You put it in the email, you put it in the, in the system and it works. Um, and then I want to encourage you, like, look, you know, we're talking about a lot of old school, a lot of like belly to belly stuff, but combine some of this stuff with some modern stuff. If you're sitting around at home and you're not doing stuff, make sure your Facebook is, is polished up your Instagram and your Google account, your website, and you can actually start to, uh, invest a little bit of money in Facebook ads that direct people to your website, or you can have them, uh, call you directly. It can direct them to your phone number, whatever the case might be. And, and try some of this new school stuff. If you've got a, a budget of $5 a day, I mean, that's 150 bucks a month. That's nothing. I mean, just stop eating out and, and, and you're done like five bucks a day, big deal. And, and you, you might be surprised what you find, or you can go into, uh, the United States postal service has an everyday mailer campaign. You've got to use a com- combination, pick a few things to get your name out there and then consistently do them. Don't, don't pick one and then drop it. Think it didn't work. You know, that's the problem with all this stuff out there. I mean, I know that we hate like, uh, like, you know, Angie's list and, uh, uh, what's that other one called? Like all those services that they charge you to, you know, push you in front of like home advisor, things like that. Like, I know we hate those things, but I've, I've literally talked to contractors who are like, no, look, it works. You just have to do it in a certain way and make sure you do it for like months and years at a time and keep doing it. It could actually work. Like I've heard people swear up and down on the benefits of home advisor. Now I'm not telling you to go do home advisor. All I'm saying is that You've got to pick something or a few things, preferably, and stick to them. Put your work in. Yeah, home advisor. Like, put your work in, and it you will reap the benefits. You can't. It can't be like a one week campaign or even a one month campaign. You've got to get in front of these people. That's why you know one of the things I I, I used to do is look into companies that had more trucks on the road. Even like a paint. Like I'm thinking of a painting company, right? in Morro Bay, where I was, there was a painting company that had like 20, 30 trucks. I mean, more trucks than any of the other painting companies, more trucks than any of the other contractors, subs, generals, whatever. And I thought, man, why do they have so many trucks? Why? And so, but one thing I noticed is they did a lot of marketing, right? And it's been, it's like, oh, it's, well, duh. But <laughs> they did this every door mailer, like every single month. And there's actually systems where you could look it up. You could send one a week for four weeks and then one a month for six months and then go back to one. So there's different system. But anyways, it was a regular, I would always get it. And it's a, it's a five by eight card in the mail. And it said painting, ABC painting or whatever it was. And I always got it. And like, I always threw it away. Everybody throws away. Doesn't matter after seven or 12 times. When you think of painting, you're going to think of ABC painting. 
if I was doing that with my tile company, when I thought of tile, I'm going to think of that tile company who keeps sending me stuff in the mail. And mail is actually, uh, it has a higher, uh, it's actually good in 2020. You, you wouldn't think it's good, but it's actually good marketing in 2020 because we don't get a lot of mail. We don't get a lot of junk mail like we used to. When, when we were kids, with, that thing would be just full of junk mail and email was brand new. AOL, you got mail, right? And email was the hottest thing. Nowadays, email, nobody wants another email. Nobody really wants another email, but you send them a letter, especially if it's a handwritten letter. Oh man, you just made their day. I mean, when's the last time you got a handwritten letter from grandma? Yeah, it hasn't happened. It doesn't happen anymore. So if you can sit down and send them a handwritten letter and there's companies who will actually write handwritten letters look alike on a machine, there's, there's printing presses that do that, that will, you know, kind of, it's just that personal touch. It's just that personal touch. And you start, if you started doing that, if I, I mean, I want, I really want to meet somebody who's doing this. None of you are doing that. None, not a lot of people are doing this. I, I, I've, before you've known me as tile money, I used to listen to a lot of podcasts, a lot of contractor podcasts, a lot of real estate podcasts, a lot of entrepreneur podcasts. And a lot of these guys were doing this mailer stuff and doing it consistently. That's how they're out there. I mean, investors do this. Investors do this all the time. They just canvas neighborhoods. We buy homes for cash. You've seen those signs. They work. There's a reason they keep doing it because this stuff works. Paul Lucia, four years ago, he says in his comment, we built tile signs, a tile sign for our local library. Yeah, I love this story. Everyone sees and knows it. You can have a custom mosaics sign made for your local fire department, police department, such acts of public benefit, show your skill, craftsmanship, and that you are an active part of your community. I love it, Paul. Thanks for bringing this up. Get out there, be an active part of your community, whatever that means, whether you want to volunteer at the fire department, whether you want to just, listen, go to your local tile shop, say, hey, I got this great idea. I think we could do a mosaic. Go to your local uh, township, um, you know, place, whatever, and say, look, I, I want to make a mosaic. I want to donate it. I've got the tile shop's going to donate the tile uh, and the thin sets and the grouts. I'm going to donate the labor. Uh, I want to do something good for the community. While you're at it, when once you iron out the details with your city or whatever, write a blog post. Write a blog post and submit it to all the local newspapers and say, let me know uh, if you want me to edit this, let me know. This is all these local newspapers, all these local news channels are just dying for little stories like this. It's a feel good story. It's something they don't have to pay somebody to write. You wrote it. You'd be surprised. You're going to get yourself in magazines, articles, it's just about this little feel good story. Don't focus too much on yourself. Just focus on the fact that uh, the library, like Paul did, is getting a new sign and it's donated by Paul Lucia Tile or Cabot and Row Tile. And somebody says, great idea, Paul. Yeah, so this guy, I don't know who you are, uh, but he says uh, he's too busy. He's looking for full-time setters to wish to relocate to Toledo, Ohio. PM me. I mean, yeah, a lot of people are super busy right now. This is another important point, guys. If if you've been struggling for years and years and you're over, you're kind of over your business, even if you are kind of successful, I'm going to say something. It's probably just a little bit controversial. If you're not making a profit right now and you're busy, like, especially I'm talking to those of you who are busy, but you're not making a profit. You think you are, but you're not because there's no money in the bank. And so you think you're making a profit. You you think you're doing really well because you're charging more than you ever did, but there's still no money in the bank. Consider employment. And July 2020, I want to tell you to consider employment. I want to encourage you to consider employment because, yes, this is for business owners, but I talk to a lot of tilers. I, I really believe, like, things are only going to get worse. I mean, everything that's happened here in the last six months, everything – uh, election year. I mean, I mean, however you spin it, it doesn't look good for the future. So if you're struggling today and, or if you really just hate being a business owner, but you're hanging on, look to one of these guys like this Facebook comment that's actually looking for employees. He's look to some of these people who will, will put you on a, on salary, will put you, um, give you benefits, will, will put you to work doing what you know how to do. And yeah, you're, you know, 
I mean, it's, you don't own a business, but look, maybe it's a better life for you. Maybe you have young kids. Maybe you want to be home at five or six every single night, you know, five, five days a week. I mean, it's, it's true. Oh, it's Malcolm. Yeah. Malcolm. I should have known Toledo, Ohio. So Malcolm Campbell. Yeah. I mean, the guy's an awesome, smart tile contractor, business owner, the guy's doing big things and, and he's continuing to build on his business for the last, um, after the recession or during the recession, he went to school and he shut his business on. You can listen to his podcast episode. I encourage you to, uh, May or June of last year, about a year ago, I guess. Um, and super smart guy. And he's putting a lot of people to work. Uh, and I know Dirk Sullivan was recently hiring in Portland, out of Portland, Oregon. Same thing. I mean, he, he gives his guys benefits. Uh, they've got trucks. They've got, you know, all the tools. It's, it's a real good operation. I'm, I'm going to be talking to uh, a, a lady who's writing a book on, on uh, millennials and, and construction. I'm going to have her on the podcast actually here, I think. Is it later this? No, maybe in next week. And um, Oscar, thanks for saying hi, man. Since Oscar, since you're on the road and Florida's your territory, you should come see me. Let's hang out. I'm over here in Bradenton, man. Let's let's do lunch. I've actually, I'm going out. That reminds me, I'll, I'll tell you some tile money news. We're coming up on, here on an hour, so I'm probably going to wrap this up. But I'm going out on the road here to a local job. And something I've been wanting to do, I've been meeting some local tile contractors I'm going out to, to an island here, not too far south of me, and I'm going to be kind of like documenting this local job. Excuse me. And I'm going to make a little podcast special episode about it and, and talk to him about his job because uh, he's doing a really great things. He's over here in Florida selling showers for like six and $7,000. And a lot of guys are. Now that I'm down here, I'm, I'm talking to guys. A lot of guys are. Of course, we're on the coast. We're on the water. But still, you know, all that negative talk about Florida, it's not necessarily true. You got to find your niche. You got to you got to figure it out. And um, it's not just one guy doing that either. I've, I've met multiple guys. So, Oscar, I, I'd love to see you down here. And let me just check my notes here. Make sure I... Uh, Oh, so I guess the last point, if you're not busy, but your phone's ringing and the marketing's there and you're getting a lot of work and you're just not landing the jobs, then that's a whole nother problem. That's a whole nother problem. Um, and no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to ride a boat to the island. I, I can drive. It's like, they, they call them islands, but they're kind of, I guess, connected by bridges. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, so look, look, if you're not landing jobs, that's a whole nother problem, right? That's a whole nother set of problems that you got to identify. Why am I not landing this work? Why are they not going to me? Is it just because I'm double prices? Do I need, do I need to figure out my pricing structure a little bit more? Or, and I guess we already kind of talked about that. Do I need to sell myself more? You know, thanks to Dave, we brought this up earlier. Um, do I need to sell, work on my sales skills? Uh, do I, do I need to, uh, follow up more? Uh, why are they, you know, not going with me? I, I, I'm really looking forward to this blog post. I'm really having fun with it because it's a, it's a real problem in the Facebook groups. People are, are saying like, look, uh, one and done. Like if they don't respond, I don't like no, no sweat off my back. And I get it. Like you, you, you don't win every job and you don't want every job. Right. But what, what I'm seeing with some of you are you're following up. You're putting that extra 30 minutes in to follow up, have a conversation. And if you land half of those, so let's say you're losing half your jobs and then you start this follow-up thing and then you start landing half of those. I mean, you just gained, you know, 25% more work, right? So it's worth it to, to figure out what's happening and, and take some time to figure out why you're not busy, identify the problem, and then really just go after it. Just go after fixing that problem. So I hope that helps. I hope this has been encouraging. Um, it looks like we've had about 17, 18 people here the whole time. So I appreciate you guys watching and, and making comments and asking questions. If anybody has a comment or a question, do it now. I'll, I'll probably wrap this up here in a few minutes. And, um, you know, just kind of a summary. Uh, guys, I, I mean, I want to motivate you. I want to tell you, like, some of you are out there killing it and it can be done. So don't give up. Um, and then, you know, the tile news I, I shared with you was later Crete. Ron Nash is on the road. Check them out inside the inside the Facebook group, Inside Track. Uh, that's where they give all the new information about later Crete, even before they publish it typically. Uh, but you can watch his lives. I mean, he did a live here, uh, I, I think, on Sunday with, uh, who was it? Uh, 
Rod Cat, Rod Catwick, and he, he was in Rod Shops. And so if you haven't seen that, search it in Tile Money, search Ron, the name Ron Nash video under a video, you'll find that live. And uh, he's going up the Oregon coast. He's going in Washington. I'm going to put that map on the screen again, because if you're on this route, I would encourage you. Uh oh, I froze up. I would encourage you to, uh, I don't know if I lost your what. I would encourage you to, to reach out to Ron and, and tell him where you're at. And if you're anywhere close to this map, you can see he's going down to Las Vegas, to Los Angeles. Um, I don't know if he's going to San Diego or not, but he's going up to, you know, through San Francisco, through Sacramento, straight up to Portland, Seattle, and then over to Miss Missoula, Montana. So if you're anywhere on that, uh, on that route, I would reach out to Ron, tell him you got an interesting job. He'll come over and say hi. He might bring you some goodies, some Lady Creek goodies, and and should be a fun should be a fun time. So Carl says consistency is the key. I agree. I it's it's all about consistency. Figure figure out a little system, implement some of these tactics, find your own tactics or different tactics, and just implement them and stick to them for hopefully six months, twelve months, and then you'll. You know, after three months, you should start seeing some results. After six and 12 months, you'll start really reaping the rewards. And then don't give up. Don't give up. And then the the news from the NTCA, just to remind you, they got this new VIP text messaging system. All you got to do is text NTCA to the number 31996, and you can actually uh, get on their text messaging system, which is really convenient. I mean, that way you don't miss it when they come close to you. Uh, if they're having a round table discussion, like I'm gonna join one tomorrow, I think it's at like three Eastern time or something like that. And it's a Zoom meeting. They're doing a, most of these round tables like via Zoom, of course, um, which you have to do anymore. And then uh, I'll just put a, another shout out to Chase Twitchell with um, his new uh, design, his new company, uh, brand, uh, Flow FX here. You can go over to Flow FX and get in on a great pre-launch deal, uh, $20. And Chase recently became uh, one of the Patreons uh, for my Patreon account. And I appreciate that, Chase. Uh, for like 20 bucks a month if, or 10 bucks a month, whatever you can afford, you can you can support me. If, if you're profitable, if you have extra money, if not, no worries. Um, you can support me in the work I'm doing. Uh, click on the link here in the, wherever you're watching this uh, or listening to this, there'll be a link to do that. And I appreciate it. I truly appreciate it. I'm gonna give everybody a shout out and I'm working on some uh, private uh, content for patrons. So, all right. Well, that's about it. Uh, oh, Oscar's got a good one here. Over, under promise and over deliver. I like that. Under promise and over deliver. Great, great um, suggestion there, Oscar. And it's never been truer today. Uh, you know, and that's how a lot of people are kind of establishing themselves as like the mosaic person. I mean, even Joshua Nordstrom said back in the day, he used to just like say, hey, I'll just give you a small mosaic for free if you want it. And he would do a fish or something and he would just do it for free. I mean, it could be that way with niches. It could be that way with, you know, single set pebble floors or, you know, design, you know, anything like don't even don't even sweat it. If, if you're trying to make your, you, you know, your name known, don't even sweat the extra two, three hours that it's going to take you just do it get your name established out there that client is going to be over the top i remember i remember one of my, my <laughs> i remember one of my first jobs in morro bay it, it was like that i mean i met this guy he was a super cool client super chill and we were remodeling his shower and later i remodeled his other shower but um the kids man he had these grandkids and they were just the best kids ever and it's kind of annoying because they come in like all the time like but at some point I was just like, ah, just have fun with it. And I was just having fun the whole time. I mean, really, I just really got, uh, they're really friends of, I mean, friends of mine. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I met them and they became friends, but, um, I remember his grandkids came in there and we, they, they had found, we were pulling the, the pebbles off the sheets and they had like, they were having fun, like helping me pull the pebbles off the sheets. And they had found this one that like looks like a heart and it was kind of like broken. It wasn't really, I, pro I probably wouldn't have installed it, but they're like, oh, can we install this? And I was like, oh, I don't know. And then like somebody, one of the adults was like, oh, let it do it, do it. And so we installed it in this special little spot, like right as they were entering. And that just made their day. I mean, those kids were so happy. The adults were happy. It really made an impression. It was just such a small thing. 
I mean, I, I did much more than that even on that job to really um, follow uh, Oscar's advice there of under-promising and over-delivering. Um, so Robert, uh, Roberta, excuse me, Rossi has given us some, uh, some good information here. So you can follow him uh, by following that link and she's put it in the comments. So uh, I, I'm not even gonna, that's, that's too long of a link to even say, but basically uh, if you need that, let me know, we can get you. Uh, it's an appreciation tour. So Ron's just going around saying hi to some of his uh, clients and some of his uh, Lady Creek fans and contractors in general. And he's gonna be filming some, some videos and stuff like that. So. All right, guys. Well, that's it for me today. Uh, happy Tuesday. I hope you guys are having a good week. Um, we've got some great uh, interviews scheduled for the Tile Money podcast. I'm actually working on some stuff behind the scenes. I don't want to talk about it really until it's actually all done and, and ready to be released and I'm actually doing it. I've made the mistake of doing that before. And that's, I guess, my last tip for you is I just don't talk about stuff until you're actually doing it. You don't want people to like say anything negative. I will say though, I will say some, some of my people who have been, and I meant to say this earlier, some of my people who have been uh, kind of critics of the tile money podcast, I want to thank them honestly, because I'm making some improvements based on their criticism. At first I didn't like it. I didn't like hearing the criticism, but I, I really warmed up to it and welcomed it and thought about it for a long time and thought, you know what, they're right. I can improve on the podcast. I can do a few different things, just a few tweaks. And look, I mean, I've been doing this a couple years now and I, I love tweaking it. I love doing some different stuff like these live, you know, live deals where we can talk to each other. And uh, so I've got some nice stuff I'm working on, some, some fun stuff you're gonna enjoy. Um, and I think that really the, the idea here is to continue to help uh, tile contractor business owners. I got my LLC now for tile money, so I'm all in, I'm, I'm you know, I. I thought about maybe doing something else, but this is what I'm doing. And so many of you have responded in such a loving and kind and happy way and told me that this is helping you. So I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm just gonna keep putting fuel on the fire and keep trying things and keep getting feedback from you. That's what I'm really enjoying to do. And um, thanks to the, crit the, the ones who are uh, openly criticizing me, you know, in a kind way. I mean, nobody really bashed me too hard, uh, but it was in a kind way and constructive criticism and it's really helping me to think about this and think, you know, maybe I could tweak some things and get a little bit more um, uh, impactful, a little bit more impactful. And so that's what I'm going to continue to do um, until next week, guys. Actually, I'll probably be going live multiple times this week here. I'm planning on a couple different things. So you'll be seeing me more and more here doing some live stuff. And I'm just kind of um, stacking it up uh, so that I can... Uh, uh, have everything scheduled out so the, the episodes are a little bit more consistent. All right, guys, uh, that's it for me today. Happy Tuesday. Have a great week. And as always, stay profitable out there.